Today we are going to do. Good morning, sir. Sorry. Today we are going to do another session: corporate lending. We are going to discuss corporate lending. So, corporate lending granting facilities for corporates. The corporates are commercial enterprises. So, when we say commercial enterprises, we can have uh, different type of corporate uh, commercial enterprises. Types of commercial enterprises. You can classify the commercial enterprises. The classification is based on asset value, turnover, annual or monthly turnover, number of employees of the enterprise. Based on that one, the financial institution they are categorizing their customers. They are categorizing their commercial category, commercial customers based on the customer's asset value, annual or monthly or periodical turnover of the business, the number of employees of the enterprise based on that. So, what are the types of these commercial enterprises? One is small and medium scale businesses. Small and medium scale businesses. Under this category, sole proprietorship business may come, partnership businesses may come, and small private companies may come. So when these small and medium scale businesses, when they request facilities, you have to appraise, evaluate those requests. So earlier you would have learned there are certain tools the bankers apply to do this uh, appraisal or credit evaluation, five C's method, you would have learned, Campari method, pass, papers, these are certain tools or methods or, uh, or evaluating or appraising techniques developed by senior bankers long time ago. So you can apply. By applying these techniques, you can evaluate the credit request made by small and medium small scale businesses. Then large scale commercial enterprises. Yes. So these large scale commercial enterprises, that also we can categorize further. So I must tell you one thing, the banks, you take uh, any banks, they have their scales to categorize. As I told you earlier, based on asset value, turnover, or number of employees employed, based on that one, they have categorized their customers. So one is, I told you, small and medium scale businesses, and then large scale commercial enterprises, businesses. In that category is coming corporate businesses. So corporate businesses, we are large scale private and public companies Corporations are coming in the corporate businesses. Then conglomerates, in the category, conglomerates, we call it. So what are these conglomerates? Group of corporates in different industries in a country. Group of corporates in different industries in a country. So a group of companies or corporates they are involved in different industries in a country. For an example, John Keels, you can take, or you can take um, John Keels and then Haley's International, Haley's, Haley's. Then there are so many companies, conglomerates in Sri Lanka. These are the examples. And then another category, multinational, or international or transnational companies. What are these companies? Corporates established in more than one country. So all these are corporates, but different category. One is corporate businesses, other one conglomerates. I have told you what is the meaning of conglomerates. And then multinational, international, transnational companies. These are corporates. They have their businesses in more than one country. More than one country. 
So now you know these are the different types of copper is. Now we are going to discuss how to appraise or evaluate a request made by a corporates for the loan facilities or the credit facilities. Well, corporate credit analysis. I have, we earlier maybe they would have told you credit analysis is really the risk assessment of the business risk assessment and there is really senior bankers used to say a well appraised loan is half repaid a well appraised loan is half repaid so for the balance half only you have to do the monitoring follow up and all those things so appraisal is an important thing when we say appraisal it is risk assessment of the business any businesses any business even small and medium scale businesses or whatever the businesses risk assessment of the business is an important thing it comes from the credit proposal itself it comes from the credit proposal itself right now we go to corporate credit analysis this is really the risk assessment it's a complex or complex subject complex subject last number of elements to be compared you have to analyze many many elements you have to analyze credit analysis is like a chain being stretched you know we are putting chain there are so many links in the chain you can see links when you stretch the chain if all the links are strong yes there won't be problem even one link is weak, that chain may break. Each link in chain represents an element in the analytical framework. There may be stronger links, but when the weakest link gives away, the chain will snap. So, when you do a corporate or any credit analysis, you must very carefully analyze all the elements involved. Even one item one aspect is weak, then that may lead to credit failure, project failure, or business failure. So keep it in the mind, we go further. List links in the credit chain. What are the links in the credit chain, corporate credit chain? The environment, you have to analyze environment. Where are the businesses? The industry, yes, analyze the industry where your customer is involved, the industry. Then the competitive position within the industry where your customer is. Then the financial risk analysis, the financiers of your customer. Then the management of your customer. And finally, credit structure and the collateral quality. You must see if everything is okay, you must structure the credit and the collateral offered by the customer, you have to see the quality of the collateral. So there are mainly six links, the environment, the industry, competitive position of the your customer, of your customer, financial risk of your customer, management of your customer, and the credit structure and the collateral quality. So six. But the first two one, the environment and the industry, both are common to a country. Both are common to a country. Then the competitive position is regard to directly to your customer. Competitive position, financial risk management, and the credit structure, those are directly to your involved with your customer. The first two items, the environment and the industry, are common to a country. So we can consider both of them, the environment and the industry together. So there will be five items. So it is very popularly known as five pillars of credit analysis. It is very popularly called as five pillars of credit analysis. And then, so in this analysis, one is financial analysis is there and other items are non-financial analysis. Financial as well as 
non-financial as an analysis. So various way we call it, financial and non-financial analysis, why five pillars of credit, like that we can call it. So anyway, this is popularly known as five pillars of credit. Okay, we go through one by one. Evaluation of environment of the country. That is country risk. We call it country risk. Evaluation of the environment. We call it as country risk. So country risk analysis. For an example, if a company or a, a corporate from Japan, they want to start a business in Sri Lanka when they are coming. Before they start their business in Sri Lanka, they will do the environmental analysis in Sri Lanka. Whether the environment is conducive for their business to do their business in Sri Lanka. That's what we call it as they do the country risk analysis. Okay. So what are the items coming in this country risk analysis or the environment analysis? Political or regulatory condition of the country. Economic condition of the country, social condition of the country, technological, ecological, and legal. So this. So we call it as if you take the first letter from all these items, P E S T E L, it is popularly known as pestel analysis. So you do a pestel analysis when your customer wants a facility. You do the countries countries, pestle analysis. Political or regulatory environment, how it is for the business, how it is for the business. So first of course, you will look at government restriction, whether there are any government restriction for this business, whether government issues license, whether the customer has to obtain license. So various businesses, they have to the business promoters uh, or the uh, enterprises, corporate, they have to obtain the licenses. So that you have to look at whether the government has restriction to do those businesses, whether the government issues licenses. There are so many businesses, government issues licenses. For a, for a, for a very easy example is uh, alcohol, brewing alcohol. Obviously, the promoter of that business has to obtain license. Then, other government, other governments impose import quotas. Now, Sri Lanka, the customer from Sri Lanka, he wants to export item to maybe to some other countries, foreign countries, Japan or European countries like that. So, other government impose import quotas. So when they import, whether they are imposed import quotas, it is based on the quota system. You have to see that one. Tariffs on the products. Tariffs on the products. How is the tariffs on the product you are exporting to various countries? Whether there are non-tariff barriers. So basically there are tariff barriers and then non-tariff barriers. One is Tariff barriers, it is basically duties and taxes. Tariff, duties, taxes when you are exporting to other country. So the importer there, whether he has to pay uh, duties and taxes. Similarly, when you are importing here in Sri Lanka, you have to pay taxes and uh, duties. So these are tariff barriers. Non-tariff barriers, what do you mean by non-tariff barriers? These are really the quality of the product. Quality of the product. You are. Now, based on that one, you are very well know. You know, GSP plus European Union has earlier they have provided GSP plus facility to Sri Lanka, but later they have stopped it based on quality. On quality, uh, based on the quality. So similarly, early also we had problems. But that was sold and again problem. So these are non-tariff barriers. So you must understand whether there are any tariff barriers or non-tariff barriers for your customer to import or export. 
then government grants or subsidies available whether the government whether the government is providing grants or subsidies for your customer to import item or to export item compared to those available in global market like now sri lanka for an example sri lankan government providing uh, mm, subsidies or grants to certain businesses certain manufacturing businesses why to promote so if the government provides subsidies then the cost of production will be low so the customer can that uh, industrialist or the manufacturer can export to other countries in a competitive price cost of production is low so he can sell at a competitive price he can earn foreign exchange for the country so based on that one government is providing subsidy or grants to the uh, manufacturer similarly this is in the global market so similarly if vietnam government also providing subsidy or grant to their for their manufacturers of similar products you must compare if the if their subsidy or grant is more than how, what we are providing in sri lanka then the cost of production of vietnam manufacturers will be lower than sri lankan manufacturer so in that case the vietnam can offer a better price in the global market so you must see you must compare to those available in the global market then i have already told you duties or taxes on products import export yeah how is the duties and taxes then the regulatory requirements there are regulatory requirement to establish the safety or consumer protection so there are so there are so there are regulatory where the government impose regulatory yeah there are so many regulatory actually uh, the monitoring agencies will inspect those industries manufacturing plants and impose various regulatory measures so whether there are regulatory requirement in regard to safety or consumer protection and then finally free trade agreements so this is the agreement between sri lanka and with other countries for a free trade for certain products duty free facilities duty free access so those parties the both parties sri lanka as well as the other country with which the sri lankan government is entering into the free trade agreement both will agree for certain certain products both government will provide uh, will uh, duty free duty free and actually now sri lankan government has made this duty free agreement mostly with all sac countries sac countries with india with pakistan with uh, bangladesh all these countries sri lankan government so you must look at oh, what and what products it is duty free what and what products the duties and various other taxes how is the condition you have to see when you are doing the appraisal so this is political or regulatory environment how it is for your customer in sri lanka you have to analyze then economic environment how is the economic environment how is the industry or company affected by higher interest rate in the country if the interest rate is higher then the cost of production will be higher if the cost of production is higher your selling price will be also higher so in the international or global market you won't be able to compete with other countries where the interest rate is low because of them because of that their cost of production is low then they can offer at a better price you must this is one aspect higher interest rates will affect the industry then the fluctuating foreign exchange rates actually in the case of foreign exchange rate for you to purchase your raw material for your import you have to use a foreign exchange 
Similarly, when you export, you will earn foreign exchange. So foreign exchange should be stabilized. There will be increase over a period of time, but it should be stabilized, slightly increasing, increasing, increasing like that, but fluctuating. It is very, you can't predict. You can't predict what will happen to the dollar in another uh, coming week. So when you import, you think uh, this rate will be, parity rate may be this much, you are ordering for import. When the item comes, the parity rate has increased. Then your plan and everything will go for offset. So fluctuating foreign exchange rate is bad for the industries. Then the high inflation rate. Inflation rate is, inflation is the rise in prices, in commodity prices. So when there is inflation, it affects everybody, everybody. Labor charges will go, raw material will go, utility charges will go up. So with the high inflation rate. So then what will happen again? Your cost of production will be higher. As I told you earlier, you won't be able to compete in the global market. So this also you have to address. This is so how the industry or company affected by higher interest rate, fluctuating foreign exchange rate, then high inflation rates. Then another thing, how cyclical is the industry? Lead or lack in the economic cycle. Lead or lack in the economic cycle. What is the uh, industry the cyclic. Really, if you analyze any business in any country, the business is not uh, really uh, static. There are ups and downs. So it is cyclical. These are ups and downs. So it is cyclical. So when the success are cyclical, there is improvement in the business. So the business will go up. So it contribution to the GDP will be up. Growth rate is more. G contribution to the GDP also. So we call it as boom. The business boom. That is the business is going upward trend. For an example, sometime back the building boom in Sri Lanka is still continuing. More and more buildings are coming. Apartments building, business uh, buildings, are coming a building boom. Similarly, any business, there may be, yes, go up. We call it boom. So it is it won't go continuously. After some time, it has to, it may come down. It may come down. So we call it when the business is coming down, it is recession. We call it recession. Now, during the period of boom, during the period of boom, more companies will operate in the industry. More people will be employed in the industry. More expenditure in the industry. More income in the industry. More GDP contribution to the industry during the time of boom. When it is coming down, it is recession, the opposite will happen. Some inefficient industries or companies may close down. Some inefficient. Because of that, there may be unemployment. People will, more and more people will be unemployed. Growth rate is reducing. Growth rate is reducing. Then contribution to the GDP also reducing. This is during the recession. The recession also may go for two or three years. Then again, it will come up generally. Again, boom, recovery. Then it will be recovery. And then boom. It will recover from the recession. And again, after some time, boom. Sometimes the recession may continue further. Sometimes the recession may continue this depression. It is depression. What will happen? The growth is negative growth. Growth may be go negative growth. More and more companies will close down because of their inefficiency. 
more and more people will be unemployed so these changes you must know what is happening now your your customer company is a manufacturer he is exporting to other countries so how is the economic condition in those countries the business cyclic whether it is a boom or um, recession or recovery or depression now uh, efficient or very uh, knowledgeable economists used to predict what will happen in the coming year there is going to be a recession they predict so now sometime back there was recession in europe europe uh, and in canada america yes so during that time if you were customer export the item they won't be able to sell as anticipated i recession the money in the people's hand is low they won't be able to spend much if it is during the boom yeah people have money they they will spend so your item will move fast so you must see the cyclical condition of the industry lead or lack in the economic cycle and similarly the price elasticity of the industry's products and its raw material you all know how the price elasticity will affect so that also you had to consider in the economic environment so this is other economic environment you had to do your analysis in the social environment this is also important whether the industry is inherently stable or affected positively or negatively by changes in social taste or fashions fashions go out as a well less coming in now fashion is an important thing this affects is items like garments jewelries these are the items now some 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 manufacturers garment manufacturers they prepare some design and according to the design they are manufacturing so that uh, design would have been purchased that clothes or garments with that design would have been purchased by people but all of a sudden that may vanish so those items cannot be sold then your customer will be in trouble so the fashion may come and go. maybe after some time this may come one best example i always say is bell bottoms bell bottoms trousers for gents as well as ladies long time ago the first bell bottom came i think it is 1970 70 19 early 70s the first bell bottoms came after some time that vanished after five or six years back it again came with some changes both men and women bell bottom and recently i have seen bell bottom some ladies are wearing bell bottoms so this is coming and going similarly the jewelries gold in jewelries of course it won't affect much because they can uh, recast it they can recast it but in the uh, imitation jewelries they can do anything if the fashion goes that cannot be sold so you have to look at it social environment apart from them social and cultural issues also you have to consider certain projects certain businesses some people do not like a very good example some big company wanted to establish a alcohol brewing industry factory in eastern province A reputed company in Sri Lanka. They wanted to establish the alcohol brewing uh, business uh, uh, factory in Eastern Province. People opposed it. There were protests and big uh, uh, against uh, the factory people. Ultimately, the company has to. The company gave up that idea. 
but they have purchased the land they have put up the uh, buildings so on so that cannot be that cannot, that cannot be uh, they, they couldn't continue it so you must well and these are the risk involved so all these things these are the risk involved political or regulatory uh, and no the economic environment political or regulatory environment called uh, economic environment social environment so there is a risk involved so you have to analyze see that one otherwise if you neglect it your customer will be in trouble your customer will be in trouble in the technological environment technology the important thing in the technology is production process how production process mean how a product is made how a product is made has there been fundamental change in the cost structure of manufacturing the product has there been fundamental change in the cost structure of manufacturing product a good example is a very old example also is better to uh, know that one paddy milling machinery those days paddy milling was done by uh, hala those days, even now also hala is there is a machine so that remove the outer husk from the paddy and separate the hull and the husk separately those uh, hullers earlier they were using iron rollers iron rollers were used so when the paddy is going through these iron rollers the husk is uh, broken and uh, removed at the same time the grains also the rice grains also there will be damages there will be damages you won't get the full rice grain there may be damages so that gave a poor quality product so this was going on for years but then the japanese uh, invented uh, uh, technology they yeah, they made a change in the technology instead of iron rollers they have used rubber rollers rubber rollers so rubber rollers also remove the outer husk but without harming the grain without breaking the rice grain so the rice grain is a good quality rice grain you were able to get. and the wastage is also low and you are getting a good quality rice with this japanese uh, technology so later more and more people started to uh, convert their mills to this uh, new hala machine so now what happened there are there, there was a fundamental change in the constructs of the manufacturing of the product because of this technological improvement so thereafter the uh, price of course the good quality rice at uh, because wastage is also low so at the best price they were we were able to buy so this you have now what happened there had been actually earlier about 7000 paddy mills all over sri lanka all and most of the mills were closed down because of the technology get change most of the mill closed down and now there are about seven or eight big millers big millers in polonnaruva anuradhapura districts all modern machineries all with modern machinery and in other provinces also there are small millers with the modern machineries but with the low capacity modern machinery others have i told you about 7000 paddy millers were there small and medium scale they all closed down because of this technological change because they were unable to purchase the new machinery at the high cost anyway the government also provided facilities to change the paddy millers to change their machinery some people utilized those facilities and changed to the new machinery others of course they have given up this is one aspect you have to see when you do the credit appraisal for the uh, corporate customers big industries whether the product is obsolete yeah. you would have seen so many products have gone obsolete because of the technological changes 
in the recent past you would have seen earlier when you go to an office you would have seen typewriters remington typewriters like that then the typewriters electronic typewriters came that also gone then the computers came desktop computers came that also you won't be able to see in most of the offices laptop came so technology got changed and good there with the uh, remington typewriter again and again you had to type uh, is a typist has a lot of work but now because of the correction but now with the computer system and then and there you can correct the, without much problem you can produce the uh, whatever the report you can prepare so technology can change this is one example even other example for the importer and export earlier communicate through uh, telex telex machine all the office had telex the telex has gone obsolete then the fax machine came the fax also there are later fax machine four in one five in one machines came with the printer uh, printer all those things but now people are using emails the importer as well as exporter they are using the email so some products have gone obsolete even in the financial industries one important product went obsolete that is traveler's check you would have heard thomas cook was very famous for the traveler's checks their main business was traveler's checks that company went bankrupt because traveler checks have gone obsolete instead of that one atm cards and credit cards are being used by the customers who are going abroad they are using their credit card and uh, atm cards earlier when we were going you go to the bank and get the traveler checks signed in front and in front of them and you carry and again you go to a bank in those foreign countries then you are going you go and change and everything that hustle is not there now you can find any atm you can atm machine go and put your credit card or uh, atm card you can get your money so thomas cook they were the uh, they, they were the big company dealing with this traveler checks earlier they went bankrupt but again now again they have you can they are working on it but not with the uh, traveler checks with the other financial instrument they are working on it so this is important whether likely to be superseded by a better new product here yes. so now certain products are there whether some new product whether it will come so you must have an idea to judge whether a new product there is a possibility of new product come with which may be better than the current product in price or the quality so if something comes like that then the present product may go obsolete so you have to judge it the technological environment you have to judge it. then the ecological environment ecology mean your surrounding fauna and flora fauna means fauna means animals flora mean plants fauna and flora and then water air soil all these things collectively we call ecology water air soil all these things and the fauna and flora fauna f a u n a fauna and f l o r a flora plants and animals collectively we call them ecology so there may be so the industry you are you are um, your customers industry may affect you have to look at it green issues we call it green issues Re industries record on pollution there may be pollution problem environmental pollution there may be air pollution there may be water pollution there may be noise pollution etc pollution so pollution control is important you would have seen if you are following it many some of your customers some i have seen 
some customers they were legal legally action taken against the customers for certain uh, problems environment they for causing environmental pollution one important thing you may know i think Kambaha district, Ratu Paswala. Kambaha district, Ratu Paswala. Some gloves uh, make manufacturing, rubber gloves manufacturing company. They are effluent, that is wastewater. It was just allowed to go and that went and polluted all the water the people, that was used by the people for drinking and washing purposes. People were using the water and for the animals to drink uh, those water that water was polluted by this industry there was a big uh, protest and some action taken by some government uh, officials some people died also would i heard that one this is water pollution caused by a industry that should never happen again another good example in India, uh, there was in South India, there was a place called Tirupur, Tirupur, South India, famous for dyeing, dyeing industry. Dyeing industry means the fabrics, coloring the fabrics, dyeing the fabrics. The fabric manufacturers make the fabric and hand over this industry. They will give the color, the dyeing. Dyeing, dye is a chemical. After dying, that water was allowed, just freely allowed by those industry, by those manufacturers, industrial. That went and polluted all waterways, ponds, lakes, rivers, and the fish, fish in the river or ponds also died. People using those water for drinking and washing purposes, cannot, they cannot, do, they were unable to use it. Animals don't have water to drink because it's pollution, water pollution. Some person filed a case in the court. Some person filed a case in the court. And the court heard the case and given the judgment. Immediately, this dyeing of fabric should be stopped by these companies. And the court gave six months for those uh, industries to use, treat the wastewater, treat to such satisfactory level, and then to allow the water to go out. Water treatment plants. Under such time, for six months, those industries should be closed. If anybody, any industry is not doing this, that is not, not, uh, uh, not uh, using those uh, machines to purify the water, to treat the water, treat the water that will be demolished. Court order. After six months, government official went and infected. Some companies have done it, as the court told. Okay, they allowed them to operate. Some companies didn't do it. They demolished those industries. Those industries were demolished. So this has happened. So if uh, if that same thing would have been happened in Sri Lanka and you would have fund them for their industry, see the condition? So you have to analyze the ecological environment. Legal environment. So then, the legal environment. Companies in certain industry export to low schools. Yes, and some, some companies, they are more prone to face the cases. Low cases, they are more prone. Because the nature of the industry is such that there may be accidents or various things where they can, they have to face cases, legal cases. One is product liability claim, especially the pharmaceutical companies. Especially the pharmaceutical companies because they are manufacturing pharmaceutical item medicines. They are manufacturing. If the medicine doesn't produce the anticipated result, or if the medicine produced any reverse result against the anticipation, the customer can file the case against the pharmaceutical company. A good example, 
German company, pharmaceutical company that is Pfizer, they have produced, they have made a medicine for the depression. Depression is a condition. The people who are not active, thinking, and uh, like lazy, always thinking, and, yeah. and there is depression, the psychological condition, and there's anxiety. Anxiety, by whenever. The people are, yes, for various things, they buy when all. Anxiety. So this is depression. So they are not active. They won't be able to do anything. They say headache and reason, lazy, yeah, depression. Thinking, various things they are thinking. So they produce a medicine. Like, at the same time, we should know any medicine will have a positive act and the negative. That is... Uh, uh, side effects the medicine all medicine will have side effects but generally the anticipated result as the anticipated result treatment result is better than the side effect the doctors are prescribing so this medicine also had a side effects what an important side effect was when the when people using this uh, medicine for their depression this created a tendency to commit suicide also. It created a tendency on the person who is using this drug to commit suicide. So one fellow was using that one and he committed suicide. His wife has come to know this. His husband was using the antidepressant depressive drug and he has committed suicide and the drug has a, a side effect that is drug as a side effect that is creating a tendency to commit suicide. She filed a case against the company. Pharmaceutical company, she filed a case. Right. Now the pharmaceutical company, yeah, they know it's going to be a problem for them. Their reputation will, it's a big company, will reputed company, their reputation will go and they have to pay, maybe they, maybe they have to pay a big compensation they tried to settle outside the court. Anyway, they negotiated with the, the deceased wife, deceased person's wife negotiated. They, uh, they promised to give a big amount of money for her to withdraw the case outside court, outside settlement. So she also thought, thought big money is better than the husband. So she accepted. And the case, of course, yeah, settled outside the court. So product liability claims can be uh, filed, cases can be filed by the uh, people using those products. Maybe with the hair dyes, sometimes with the hair dyes, the people are using hair dyes and, and their face also get dyed uh, black color. So these are, these are the conditions. Then the passenger liability claims. Yes, airlines, especially airlines. The customer, the passenger can file the case. For, for various purposes, they can file the case. Passenger liability claims. Then pollution claims, chemical company. As I have told you a little while ago, Indian Singapore uh, example, Sri Lankan Ratuparsala, that example, pollution claim chemical companies are more prone for these cases than employees' death, accident claims. There are accident-prone companies, industries, certain industries, certain machines. The people, operators have to be very, very careful. There are so many accidents. So thinking something else, if they put their hand, the hand is gone. If they put their hand, the hand is gone. Then they have to claim compensation. Otherwise, they will go to the court. So, these things also, you have to legal environment. How is the legal environment for this particular industry? You have to analyze. One thing can be mitigated through insurance. So, these companies, which are prone for these accidents claims, can obtain a suitable insurance claim. So, they can get paid through those insurance. So this is legal environment. Right. Now we have 
I, I am just going back. Pastoral analysis. So political law regulatory, economic analysis, social, technological, ecological, legal, in regard to the country's risk environment, environment, country risk analysis. For in, in respect of your customer, you are doing this one. And you are satisfied. Yeah, country environment is very satisfactory for this customer's project or for this customer's manufacturing industry or the business or this corporate customer's business. This country's uh, environment, you should get satisfied by doing this pistol analysis. So it is you are looking at what are the risk in the environment for your customer. It's a risk analysis. Right. Now the industry evaluation. Industry evaluation. This is also common for the country, for any particular industry. You take any foodware industry, or food industry, or pharmaceutical industry, or garment industry, or film manufacturing industry industry evaluation you must evaluate how the industry is how the industry is and especially you are looking at how is the competition within the industry because that is important thing in the industry evaluation you have to analyze and see how is the competition if the competition is low Few companies are operating in the industry, then the competition is low, then everybody is getting good income, they are able to pay their loan. They are able to pay their loan if the competition is low. If the competition is very stiff, everybody has to try hard to get their profit. To get their income and to make their profit. Everybody is working very hard. If the competition is very stiff within the industry. Then they will get a small amount of profit. So with that one. With difficulty only they will be able to pay the bank loan. So in this case you have to be more careful. You have to do more follow up. You have to monitor. Because your customer the competition in this industry is very important acute very stiff your customer also going to get a small amount of income or profit with that one he has to make their loan repayment so you have to follow it up so for those purpose mainly the industry evaluation how to do this industry identification strength and weakness of the industry reflects in the strength and weakness of the individual company if the industry is very strong then your customer also who operate in the industry also strong. If the industry is weak, then your customer operating in the industry also weak, obvious. Then what is the geographical nature of the industry? Then there is an important thing, supply chain. There is an important thing, supply chain for the industry. For each industry will have its own supply chain. What is that? We go to the next slide, you can see. Supply chain. So each industry will have its own supply chain. The supply chain start from the raw material supplier. That is one level. Then the next level, intermediate processor. Then the next level, manufacturer. Then the next level, wholesaler. Then the next level, retailer. And finally, the end user. So we see, we take an example in the supply chain. Furniture manufacturing industry. Furniture manufacturing industry. It has its own supply chain. Raw material supplier. Who is this? the person or company 
cutting down trees cutting down trees murta teka comb various types of uh, cutting down the or oh, import from burma or malaysia raw material supply supply raw material supply and then it comes to the intermediate processor who is this intermediate processor so mill operator so mill operator saw so mill operator he purchased this timber from the timber supplier that is raw material supplier make cut you by using his um, uh, sawmill make the planks pieces various thing which can be used to manufacture furniture is a intermediate processor that is sawmill operator then this item what he produced the planks pieces uh, like that coming to the manufacturer he manufacture furniture and then from this manufacturer it goes to the wholesaler he doing the wholesale trading from the wholesaler it goes to the retailer he is doing retail sale retail wholesaler and the retailer you know the difference so from the wholesaler retailer buys and he sells to the final end user maybe you and me we are the final people end users purchasing this furniture so this is the supply chain so in this supply chain there are different different level raw material supplier next level intermediate processor next level manufacturer next level wholesaler next level retailer next level end user different levels i hope this is supply chain if you take uh, paddy milling industry yes farmer raw material supplier then intermediate processor there are people who buys from the farmers they keep it the traders and then sell it to the manufacturer that is mill owners mill owners mill the paddy and supply the rice to the wholesaler the holes from the wholesaler the retailer buys and you and me, we are buying from the retailer the rice so similarly if you take any industry there is a supply chain for that particular industry special supply chain for that industry now certain things can happen or that things can be made in the supply chain what is that integration integration so there are two types of integration one is vertical integration other one is horizontal integration we go to next slide you will understand better vertical integration so in the vertical integration the supply chain is there now the manufacturer who is making the same example furniture manufacturer who is making manufacturing furniture if we think i am buying this product i am buying my raw material from the intermediate processor that is the mill so mill owner from him only i am buying and making my furnitures he is charging me more his prices are high if i have my own so mill then it will be easy to me i can make those parts suitable to me and i can make those at a low cost so the manufacturer going backward and establishing a saw mill of his own so manufacturer going backward and establishing his own saw mill instead of buying from the other person from whom he purchased earlier he has his own so then he can make the he can purchase the raw material supplier he can purchase the raw material directly from the raw material supplier and makes cut and 
make all the parts necessary for him to suit him at a lower cost rather than purchasing from the other per, other mill owner so this is going backward anyway in the vertical chain now in the supply chain these are different different levels so we call it vertical integration since it is going backward it is backward vertical integration so what is uh, vertical integration a person in the supply chain one level of the supply chain either going backward or going for forward to the next level is called as vertical integration so in this case the manufacturer going backward as intermediate processor level so this is backward integration similarly if the manufacturer thought i am supplying my items to the wholesaler i am supplying my items to the wholesaler he is keeping a big profit and selling instead of that one i will have my own wholesale point so he is establishing his own wholesale point and selling his product through his own wholesaler this is also from one level going to the next level forward so this is forward vertical integration both are vertical integration so vertical integration from one level in the supply chain going to the next level from one level in the supply chain going to the next level is gone is called as vertical integration if he goes backward it is backward vertical integration if he goes forward it is forward vertical integration so this is vertical integration in the supply chain similarly we move on to the other integration what is that one horizontal integration what is horizontal integration again the supply chain raw material supplier intermediate processor then manufacturer wholesaler retailer end user the manufacturer okay now he is operating in moratua furniture manufacturer he want to expand his business to the kandy he is establishing another manufacturing place in kandy he is expanding his another manufacturing place in or branch or whatever it is in anuradhapura same level expanding the activity in the supply chain in the same level to the other areas in the supply chain one from one level at the same level expanding to the other areas this is called as horizontal integration so there are two types of integration one is vertical integration other one is vertical integration is in the supply chain from one level going to the other level either backward or forward that is vertical integration if the activity is moved on to the backward then it is backward integration if the activity go on to the forward it is forward integration this is vertical integration then the other one is horizontal integration the activity in the supply chain expanded at the same level activity is expanded at the same level to the other areas by establishing branches or by establishing subsidiaries expanding to the other area is horizontal integration right what is the benefit is there any benefit from this integration yes what is the benefit now this vertical integration the manufacturer going backward he is establishing this is a furniture manufacturer going backward establishing his own uh, own sawmill thereby this cost of production is reducing he will be able to manufacture his product furnitures at lower cost of production so because of that one 
his profitability will increase. So he will have a better advantage than their competitors. We call it competitive advantage. He has a better advantage than his competitors who are not integrated. So the integrated business will have a better advantage than that is cost wise and profit wise advantage than his competitors. So vertical integration also same and the horizontal integration also same by manufacturer expanding to other areas also he is making more profit covering more area his marketing area is in expand expanded marketing area so he is making more profit so whether vertical integration or horizontal integration gives a benefit to the integrated company by cost reduction and then profit uh, maximization by increasing the profit so because of that one he will have a better advantage than his competitors who are not integrated okay shall we see some example anybody who can tell me this uh, integrated companies in sri lanka with a vertical or horizontal please name the company and tell me um, whether it is vertical integrated or horizontal integrated whether anyone can tell me there are so many examples Why? Yes. Anyone? Examples? No. Right. Anyway. Damro, a good example. They yeah. are furniture manufacturers. And uh, so they are doing their uh, wholesale business. They are doing their retail business also. They are expanded. They have their branches everywhere in Sri Lanka. Apart from that, they have moved on to India also. So vertical integration and horizontal integration Dumbro, good example. Then another example, Apico. Yes, they are manufacturing rubber products, uh, plastic products. They are manufacturing various other products they are manufacturing. And they are marketing through their Apico supermarkets. So vertical integration and the horizontal integration also throughout the island, they have their branches. And then another good example, supermarket chain, Cargill's supermarket. When you go to Cargill's supermarket and look at the items uh, made by various companies who has manufactured, you can see uh, some of the items manufactured by Cargill's. So are doing the manufacturing and then they are doing marketing through the supermarket. And even the vegetable, they are going to the farmers directly and by intermediate processing. And then they are doing marketing. So this also, they are horizontally and they have established their supermarket chain, expanded throughout the, throughout the country. So horizontally as well as vertically, they have uh, integrated. So because of this integration, they have cost advantage and better profit. So therefore, they have competitive advantage than their competitors. They have competitive advantage than their competitors. Right. Industry.
So when you do the industry analysis, you can see who are the people who have done, who have gone through integration in the country. Right. Then I have already told you in the industry, the competition is very important. So if the competition within the industry is low, the companies operating within the industry can earn more profit, more income and more profit. The competition is very stiff in the industry. Each company has to fight very hard to get their share of profit. This year. So as a credit officer, when you are doing a Evaluation for your corporate customer, the customer's industry. How is the competition within the customer's industry? You have to see, you have to analyze. We may just, uh, we, may, we may think the competition is only be among the companies working in, in the industry. If we take some companies, if we take uh, footwear industry, we may think the competition is actually because of Bata and uh, DSI and Gigi and there are various other small producers because of them. But the Professor Michael Porter said, no, not only that, there are five competitive forces. There are five competitive forces deciding the competition within the industry. Michael Porter, he was a Harvard uh, University professor economic college, Harvard economic college professor, Professor Michael Porter. He, of course, uh, he said, uh, analytically, he said, proved there are five competitive forces decides the competition within the industry. What are those forces? New entrants, internal rivalry, buyer's power, supplier's power, substitute production. These five Forces, these five forces collectively decide, collectively decide the competition within the industry. The Michael Porter's said, we see, how is it? So this is industry. Within the industry, the people are there. Who the buyers? Sorry, there is a internal or change here. Hmm. Would change here a player's power internal rivalry. Actually, the industry within the box industry is there because of the computer work, it got uh, some letters change. The internal should come within the industry and the buyers should go out. Buyers should go out the buyer's power. Then, so within the industry, it is internal rivalry. Please make the correction, if possible, industry. Within the box, it is industry, rivalry, internal rivalry, sorry. Industry is there, internal rivalry. So in the center, the box is there. There are industry is there, that is the industry. So there, the buyers should go out and it internal should come in. Then it is internal rivalry. internal rivalry hmm, right okay so what does it mean internal rivalry the company is already operating within the industry 
the company is already operating within the industry. Internal rivalry. Among them, the rivalry. Among them, the rivalry. This is one force. This is one force. Now, for an example, if you could be an industry, yes. Bata will be there, DSI will be there, GG will be there, and various other people who are manufacturing footwear items are there. Internal rivalry. Among them, the rivalry. That is one force. Decide in the competition within the industry. Okay. Then, up new entrants. They try to come within the industry. New entrants. They try to come within the industry. We call it threat of new entry. If the new entrants also coming into the industry, this is another force. They create a threat of new entry which also increase the competition, the new entrants. So if the new entrants coming, will, they are trying to come within the industry, that will create oh, competition to increase, more competition. So new entrants, that will end on the force. The first force, the buyer's internal uh, rivalry. First force is the internal rivalry within the industry. That is the one force. Then the second force, the new entrants, the people who try to come in within the industry. If any other firm or company try to produce a footwear item, then that is the other force. Then on the right hand side, I mean, clockwise, you, we come to next item. When a new entrant in the clockwise, the suppliers. The suppliers to the industry. The suppliers to the industry. Actually, that is shown buyer's power, not the buyers. Cut the buyers and put suppliers power. Suppliers power. Other uh, suppliers power should come here. Suppliers power. Suppliers of raw materials to the industry. They also want power. Suppliers to the of the raw material and the item inputs, suppliers of the inputs, raw material and other inputs to the industry. That is another part. If the suppliers are more to the industry, suppliers of raw materials and various inputs are more in number, then what happened? So the, the company is operating within the industry, can buy from any, anyone, can buy from anyone can buy from anyone. If the suppliers are few in number, they will demand. So the, the, the internal rivalry people will try to buy from those few suppliers. Then it will increase the competition. If the suppliers are more in number, they can buy from any supplier. The competition will be less. If the suppliers numbers are less then competition will be more so suppliers power then on the other side buyers power buyers power buyer and the buyers power that is the buyers are the people who buy products from the industry buyers are the people who buy products from the industry buyers power is the another another Force. If the buyers are more, yes, they can sell it to any number of buyers. So in competition will be low. If the buyers are few, so these people have to try to sell their product to the only, only, only those few people. So few buyers will demand. Competition will increase. Then Finally, the substitute product. If there are substitute products, the people may go for substitute. So the companies won't be able to sell their products. Or oh, it will be low. Competition will increase. So these five forces collectively decide the competition within the industry. These five forces 
collectively decide competition within the industry. Once again, internal rivalry, that is the companies already operating within the industry. Their competition will be there. They will set, they will fight, they will fight for the profit within the industry. The internal rivalry, the people, companies who are already operating within the industry. The first force. Second force, new entrant, the people who are trying to come in within the industry. They also create it's a threat of new entry. It will be a threat of new entry. So when they come, then the competition will be more. If they are coming, the competition will be more. Then suppliers power. Suppliers, suppliers power is another force. Who are they? The suppliers of raw materials and other inputs to the industry. If the suppliers are more, yes, they can buy from anyone. They can buy from the industry, can buy from anyone. If the suppliers are few, then they will try to buy. They will try to buy from those few people. So suppliers can demand, create a force that may increase the competition. The suppliers. On the other hand, other hand, it is buyers, buyers power. If the buyers are more, yes, they can buy. Buyers can buy, they can sell it to any buyer. The buyers are few, competition. The buyers will demand, I, only a few people, they will demand, that will increase the competition. Similarly, the final force, substitute, threat of substitution. Instead of this product, the industry product, if there are substitute, and better and low price, the people may go for that substitute. So because of that one, the competition will increase. So based on those things, you analyze and decide how is the competition within the industry, whether it is low or whether competition is very high or moderate, you have to decide. If the competition is low, then all players within the industry that is, the companies operating the, within the industry, they get their profit share. They will be able to pay their loans. If the competition is very stiff, they will try work very hard to get their share of profit. That may be, that may be meager share. So their loan repayment may be difficult. You have to follow it up. You have to, yes closely monitor them and follow it up and get the repayment. If it is moderate in between, again, you have to follow it up. So for this purpose, Prophet, Professor Michael Porter's five competitive forces. Now, so we have seen the we have seen the competitive, five competitive forces decide in the competition within the industry. Now, if any force, if any force, now for an example, new entrants, when they come within the industry, when they are trying to come within the industry, the competition will increase. If any item, any factors, Preventing these new entrants. If any factors preventing the new entrants coming into the industry, then what will happen? That won't change the competitive position of the industry. Industry competition, it won't change because if the new entrants are coming, then the competition within the industry will increase. If there is any factors preventing, if there are any factors preventing the new entrants coming into the industry that won't make any change in the competitive position. It won't take any change in the competition within the industry. We call it entry barriers to the en new entrants. So there are entry barriers to the new entrants. So they prevent new entrants coming into the industry. Entry barriers. There are so many entry barriers. Economies of scale, product differentiation, capital requirement, switching cost, distribution channel, 
costs, then government, government policy, expected retaliation. These are the factors prevent the new entrants coming into the industry. So they won't allow the new entrants to coming into the industry. So since the new entrants, since the new new entrants are not coming into the industry, there won't be any change in the competition level of the industry. Economies of scale. What do you mean by economies of scale? Now, when a company start first, so they will spend money. They are a fixed cost and a variable cost in making a product. So when making a product, the costs, there are two components. One is the fixed cost, other one is the variable. So when they increase the number of, I mean, products units, when they increase the products unit, the fixed cost will be same and the variable cost only will increase. So when they increase the number of products, number, units, number of units of product, the cost of production will come down. They will come to an optimal level. They can come to an optimal level. So they are, their cost of production will be low because at that one, they will be able to sell the product at a appreciable price, at a reasonable price. So the companies which have already established within the industry for a medium or long term period, companies which have already established, they will be able to sell their product at a lower price. When a new company comes, what will happen? They won't be, sell, they won't be able to sell that product at the same price as the company which is already there in the industry. Their price, the new company's price will be high. So because of that one, they won't be able to compete with that earlier company. Economies of scale. So these company, new company may think, even if I go, I won't be able to sell, I, I can manufacture, but I won't be able to sell my products at the same price as the, my competitor. So this is a entry barrier to the new entrant. So new entrant may think, no, if I go, I won't be able to sell at this price. If I sell, I have to face loss. So better I not to go within the industry. Entry barrier. Then the another entry barrier, product differentiation. Now, as an example, soap. There are various soaps in the market. Lux soap, then velvet, with washing soap, bathroom soap, toilet soap, different types of soaps. The soaps uh, now, certain people, they like certain type of certain soaps. So that is the product is differentiated. Customer loyalty is created. Some people always prefer to go for Rexona. Some people always prefer to go for Lux soap. Some people always prefer to go for Rani Sandalwood soap. Similarly, so product is differentiated. Differentiated. See, by uh, customer loyalty is created. Already there. Even uh, Lux soap, more people, they prefer due to various better presentation, better shape of the soap, better uh, packing, better smell, and better marketing tactics. Because of that one, the product has been differentiated from the other products. All are same products. If you take washing soap, yeah, all washing soaps are same. And if you are taking uh, bathroom soaps, all washing, all soaps are same. But some products are differentiated from the others by the shape of the soap, packing material and packing and the smell of the soap and the advertisement used because of that. So when a new customer comes, my God, these soaps have already differentiated and created a customer royalty. Those people are buying those soaps. If I produce these soap, I won't be able to sell. Oh, otherwise, I have to spend more money to attract the customers and sell at low price. I won't be able to do because I have to face loss. Better I not to go into this industry. 
they won't come. So these are entry barriers. Similarly, other things also you have to know. Capital re requirements. Certain industry you need big uh, capital investment. One industry example, paddy milling. All modern machineries, then only you can produce good quality rice. The uh, Polonnaru and Anuradhapur, uh, about seven or eight big industries, big uh, paddy milling, all modern machineries. That's what they, they have captured the market in their hand now. It is they decide everything in the rice market. They decide everything, rice market. So they have invested heavily, invested. And uh, they have established their paddy milling business. <coughs> so now, if you want to establish a similar paddy milling, you need about 1,000 million rupees for the plant and machineries. And another 1,000 million rupees for the working capital. Another 1,000 million rupees for the working capital. Big capital investment. Maybe at the time they, when they are starting, the, their capital investment would have been small. But with the price acceleration and everything, now it is almost you need about two thousand million rupees to establish a, a well-designed uh, uh, paddy milling, modern paddy milling, big capital investment. Actually, I know another big company, another big uh, corporate in Sri Lanka, they wanted to go for paddy milling. They are in the agriculture business. They are various businesses, but they actually they sincerely concerned with the agriculture business also. They wanted to go for the paddy milling industry. They did so many analysis on their own, and finally they have given up because one reason, big capital investment, another reason they were unable to compete with the already established paddy millers. They gave up the idea. So what happened? another entry barrier capital investment if the capital investment is great big that is an entry barrier they won't come within the industry then the switching cost now switching cost what do you mean by switching cost this is the cost monetary and non-monetary cost when you say cost when from one product you are switching on to another product if you want to switch on from one product to another product, then there will be cost. That cost can be financial cost, or maybe, or maybe uh, non-financial cost. So you must see. So when a product person think from to switch on from one product to another product, rationally if he thinks, but some people take. Uh, uh, emotional decision. Some people make emotional decision in marketing, in buying. There are two types of decision. Emotional. The emotion I must buy. Other one, rational. Or oh, whether I have to buy this, whether I need it, whether it satisfies my requirement. Uh, rationally decide and purchase. So when you think rationally, the switching cost plays an important role. Uh, example, sometime back, maybe it was some in the when a few years back, in the uh, mobile uh, mobile phone, yeah, uh, so service provider, service provider, uh, dialogue was there. I was using dialogue, dialogue uh, package, I, I was using that one. Then the Airtel came first time in Sri Lanka. Airtel also announced uh, so many benefits to the customers who use their packages. I also thought, shall I switch on from, uh, shall I switch on from dialogue to Airtel? Then uh, I yes see uh, only thing I had a lot of. Uh, friends and to whom of course I have given my number, this dialogue number, they are using that number. Then in that case, if I am switching on, I have to inform inform all of them. It will take my time and the money and everything. That is one thing. Um, 
then another important thing of course by chance if i miss somebody and uh, if they telephone and if if i would have uh, switched on to airtel i won't be i won't be using dialog then he will get a, a waste recording maker this is disconnected so he may think this this fellow didn't pay his uh, payment to dialog that's what they have disconnected it my reputation and credit will go for six then i thought better not to switch on continue with the dialog so still i am continuing with the dialog switching cost so one is monetary as well as non-monetary aspect when you consider and better whether to switch on or not to switch on so switching costs also another entry barrier to the new entrant and similarly these are entry barriers so other things i want you to follow it up i will tell you so entry barriers this also prevent the new entrants coming into the industry thereby maintain the status quo of the competition it won't either increase make increase or decrease the uh, uh, competition within the industry similarly factors affecting competitor the internal rivalry what are the factors there are various things then factors affecting buyers power this also affecting the buyers power then factors affecting suppliers power then factors affecting substitutes i have given this one only thing what you have to do is uh, any management book this is actually the management uh, item we have bank uh, we have bankers we have borrowed from the management uh, to see the competition within the industry for a credit uh, appraisal officer evaluation officer to see to judge how the competition within the industry uh, they will be using this uh, michael porter's five force uh, competition so any management book will give all these things or you go to internet michael porter's five competitive forces then there are so many websites there are so many websites so they are by all explanation and everything given i won't be able to uh, explain everything here the time consuming and uh, as an example or a few things i have explained to you other thing you on your own you have to you have to study and you have to make it clear if you have any doubt you can give me a call if you have any doubt you can give me a call so in the barriers to the new entrant similarly factors affecting the competitor that is internal rivalry existing company within the industry what are the factors affecting then factors affecting the buyer's power factors affecting the supplier's power factors affecting the substitute so this of course you have to read and understand on your own if you have any doubts if you uh, if you couldn't understand or anything you please give me a call okay we move on to the next item other factors for consideration for this industrial evaluation industrial evaluation there are new young virgin growing industries yes there are new new industries are coming up so the when it is new industry they, they are young and virgin industry so they are new industry they are young and virgin so they are growing industry they are expanding so when they are expanding the turnover within the industry also increasing so the companies will get an expanding industry more turnover they can get more and more profit so the companies operating within this type of company this type of uh, industries are can get a better profit if the number of in the companies are low few then of course they will get really a better profit in the case of new young virgin growing industry sometime back the mobile phone repairing that industry they were making money and sometime back computers that industry assembling and self they made money so similarly new new companies new new industries are coming up 
new new industries are coming up so those industries are expanding so you must see the customer you your customer operating in the industry whether the industry is a new young virgin and growing expanding so the market share will increase so the customer your customer can make more income and more profit on the other hand the matured industries some industries are matured the meaning of matured is their expansion is limited their expansion is limited <coughs> so in that case there will be a stiff competition for the companies operating within that matured industries that also you have to so in that case when you appraise the loan you have to be more careful similarly stability of the industry structural or cyclical changes stability whether the industry is changing whether the industry is changing i have explained you the cyclical changes similarly how to how whether there are boom within the industry or recession within the industry or depression within the industry or whether it is recovering industry yes the one good example sri lankan cinema industry it was once upon a time it was a very booming industry but uh, there was the, there was uh, uh, downfall and uh, but now again it is recovering the industry is now recovering so these are the thing you have to see when you do the industrial analysis and then there are other factors industrial peace or under certain industry always there is unrest Simil recently you have seen the even the teachers the unrest and the sta sector always unrest certain sectors always unrest so that also you must consider whether there is industrial peace if there is industrial peace only the industry can flourish if there is unrest then no this problem similarly you must consider the labor factors within the industry how the labor are uh, looked after well and the wage rates are uh, acceptable wage rates or low wage rates so these also facts you have to consider so after all everything you must consider and see how is the industry overall position of the industry where your customer is operating if the overall position of the industry is attractive yes whether the competition is low your customer will make good profit he can repay the loan on the other hand overall condition of the industry is not good and the competition is very stiff you have to be more and more careful you have to look at the risk factors very very carefully industrial evaluation next one <clears throat> now the next pillar evaluation of the company's competitive position now only we are coming to your company customer but of course we are look at the uh, environment uh, position environment that is common to the country then the industry outlook the second one industry outlook that is also common for the industry within the country Common for a particular industry, whether if it is a footwear industry, yes, or if it is a um, uh, furniture manufacturing industry, or if it is a plastic item manufacturing industry, uh, industry by industry. How is the position? Overall position of the industry outlook, especially with regard to competition, competition, and especially in regard to expansion. or matured industry overall condition of the industry you have to and decide now you are coming to your customer who is operating within the industry evaluation of the company's competitive position within the industry where is your customer within this particular industry this analysis the company's competitive position within the industry so to see that one 
will be doing a SWOT analysis. SWOT means strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in regard to your customer within the industry. We do it. SWOT analysis. Strength of the customer. This is internal to your company, customer's company. Already exist. The company already has it. The strength of the company. How? You have to do the analysis. Weakness. That also internal to the company. Already the company has internal. Already exists. So the strengths and weaknesses of the company, which already the company has, you have to do the analysis and see. Then the opportunities the company is getting. This is external. And it is contingent eventuality. That means it will be there and it may be go. It may go up. It won't there, wait for, uh, come and come and use and use my own, use the opportunity. No, the opportunity is there. It is external, waiting. If the company can use it, very good. Otherwise, it vanishes. Similarly, the rats. That also external. That also contingent eventuality. Now, threat is there. If the, if the company neglects it, that will affect the company. So, you do this analysis, sort analysis, strength. Weakness, opportunities, and threats. SWOT analysis. So, to do the SWOT analysis, how we do the SWOT analysis? You can't do on its own. You have to sit with the customer. Customer who knows the that company's activities and everything. Huh? You have to sit with him and ask various questions and try to find out. Find out what are the strengths of the company. What are the weaknesses of the company. You have to, di to discuss with him. Sit and discuss with him. What are the strengths of your company. What are the weaknesses of your company. And then what are the opportunities you have now. For your company. Which you can utilize. And then what are the threats. Facing you are facing now. So you have to. Now some some these are some sample questions for you to get get used to this uh, interview or question. So these are some some just yes, sample questions we have given, but you have to use it in, in regard to the company and their uh, their functions and uh, about the operation and everything. You have to you must prepare and you must sit and talk to them and find out. Their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then you decide where this company within the industry. So one question, does the company ha have a low cost structure? So that is you know, whether the company is a manufacturing company. Whether the company has a low cost structure. So that means if the low cost structure means they can sell the product at a low price and they can they can have a competitive advance against their competitors and they can make their profit so does the company have a low cost structure if the answer is yes we have a low cost structure then the others competitors then it is a strength so they have to they have to strengthen that one further the law cost structure that is a strength, so they have to use it. They have to use it. Then, is it product differentiated? I have already explained to you product differentiation. Explain whether these companies' products are differentiated. That means when compared to other similar products, this is differentiated and created a customer loyalty. Whether it has whether it has created a customer loyalty. If the answer is yes, yeah, very good. People, more, more and more customer willing to purchase this product. There is a customer loyalty as this product is differentiated from the other similar product. This is differentiated. So this is a strength. So you must use it. You must strengthen it and you must use it. And then does it have efficient and effective Distribution channel. Distribution channel means when they sell the product, various distribution network. 
So if the company has a distribution network all over Sri Lanka, now for an example, I always say, now in the case of Luxo, even in Monaragala, OCM Balandua, Gila, Petikare, whether you have Luxo, yes, because their distribution channel is so effective. Effective. Similarly, so many other, other products have an effective and efficient distribution channel, distribution network. So does it have, does your customer have an efficient and effective distribution channel? Then if that, when compared to the others, compared to their competitors, whether this company has an efficient and effective distribution channel, if the answer is yes, it is again the same. So you have to maintain that trend, no, either you go otherwise strengthen further. Then does the company have a strong R&D program to enhance product innovation, reduce production cost? This is another. Does the company have a strong research and development program, R&D program, research and development program to enhance product innovation, yeah, to innovate more and more products to innovate more and more products and to reduce the cost whether the company has strong r d program when compared to other competitors if the answer is yes very good it is a strength if no then if the all these things if the answer is no then it is weakness so if you found find out this is the weaknesses then you must correct it the weak, that is a purpose. That is a purpose. If it is a strength, you have to further improve it. Or if it is a weakness, you have to correct and build it up. Build it up as a strength. You have to correct that one. Build it up as a strength. Then, does the company have an effective marketing strategy? Yes, marketing strategy within the company. It has developed a marketing strategy. All these is within the company. Internal to the company. These are within the internal to the company. Already exist. Does the company have an efficient marketing strategy? Yes, they have a efficient marketing strategy. They have planned. There is a marketing manager or marketing director. So marketing channel, uh, advertisement programs and everything all developed. So they have an efficient marketing strategy. If the answer is yes, yes, strain. You further strain it. Or if it is no, the answer is no. It is a, it's a weakness. You have to correct it. You have to correct it. That is the question. So similarly, all these questions, you, you can just go through. This will give you the same weakness, opportunity, threat. It will give you more, uh, put on more light on this, how to analyze, uh, that is, uh, sort analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat analysis, how you will question and find out what are the strengths of the company or whether there are any weakness, whether how is the opportunities, whether the company is facing with any threat. So you have identified those things and build up more strength and if there are weaknesses correct it similarly if there are opportunities try to utilize it if there are any threat how to avoid those threat so this of course other questions also you can on your own you can go through the banker should remember that he is not running the industry when you ask these questions and talk with the customer you must remember you are not running the industry rather his job is one of the observer or analyst. You are an analyst. Hence, the need to discuss observation with the customer as mentioned above. So these are some guidelines for you to. So you have to develop your questions. You have to develop some questions. Now, there is one thing. In a mature or slow growing industry, mature or slow growing industry. So you know about the industry. Uh, it is a mature, oh, so competition is very high. Competition will be very high because the slow growing expansion also limited. 
or some industry players that is some companies operating within the industry trying to increase market share they are trying to increase their market share they adopt various uh, methods and various way they try to increase their market share if the condition is like that what is it it is sin or weakness or opportunity or threat in a mature or slow growing industry are some industry players trying to increase market share this question you understand a mature or slow growing industry so limited uh, growing limited expansion uh, competition will be very high among the industry players that is inside the industry players are some industry players trying to increase market share they are trying to say very some way they try to increase their market share so it is external and it is if they increase it will be bad to the company so it is a threat so if you identify there is going to be threats and how so you also actively you must try to expand you can't stop the uh, the, the activity to increase the market share but you have to increase you have to take steps to expand your market increase your market share are any buyers interested in backward integration hmm. are any buyers within the industry is interested in backward integration so integration i told you the meaning of integration yeah whether backward or forward is a vertical integration thereby they what will they bring down their cost of manufacturing increase uh, profitability thereby they create a competitive advantage against their competitors <coughs> so if they go for backward integration they will be competitively advantage than their competitors the competitors and your company also their competitors are any buyers interested in backward integration so buyers are any buyers interested in backward integration then it will affect so that way you have to analyze so this is swot analysis industry competitiveness thereby you decide where your customer company within the industry then the financial financial evaluation okay now 11 o'clock we will have a break we will have a break and we will meet again meet by uh, 11:50 here in this one are any buyers interested in backward integration similarly are any back suppliers interested in forward integration are any suppliers or are any buyers interested in backward integration so we go back to the we just go back and see are any buyers interested in sorry are any buyers interested in backward integration now the buyers buyers who are buying from the industry who are buying from the industry so they are buying from the industry if they are interested in backward integration what does it mean if the buyers they are buying from the industry if they are interested in backward integration what does it mean anybody if the buyers won't are interested in backward integration what does it mean backward they want to do what the industry is doing 
But the industry I want to go to the industry. So when the buyers want to do want to go for backward integration, that means they are buying from the industry, industry players. If they want to go for backward integration, they want to go to produce but the industry. So again, it will increase the competition. So it is going to be a threat to the existing company. It is going to be a threat to the existing company. The same thing, this type of things happening. Now, certain industries, people are buying from the industry. Then they think, rather than buying from them, I will manufacture my own. I will manufacture backward integration. So that will create competition to the industry. So these things, similarly, you must analyze. For that purpose, similarly, you must analyze. Are any buyers interested? Similarly, are any suppliers interested in forward? So suppliers interested in forward integration. So suppliers, what they are doing? They are supplying to the industry. So if they want to go for forward integration, they want to start the, what the industry is doing. Again, threat. Again, threat to the company working in the industry. So similarly, you must analyze and see where your customer is, the competitive position of your customer. Now, next pillar, the financial evaluation, which would have been done by uh, another lecturer. So, all analysis and ratio analysis, everything should have been done. So, based on that one, you must judge how the financial condition of your customer, the profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, gearing ratios, debt service capacity, all these ratios you will do and see whether your customer is in a good position in the past as well as in future. So you will do the financial statement analysis. When you say financial statement, that is balance sheet, profit and loss, financial cash flow, financial cash flow. Then Operating financial statement analysis. That is, operating financial statement means what is the currently the company is operating. Past financial statement generally we ask for three years. Three year past financial statement. That is now it is twenty one. Last year twenty. So the last year twenty. Financial statement is end up with 21 uh, March. So 2021 20, March statement. Similarly, 1920 March statement. Similarly, 18, 19 March statement. Three financial statements. And then from 21 March, 21 March, that statement is over, then 21 April, up to now, there will be a financial statement. But it is not a full, complete financial statement. We call it, it is management accounts. That is from March 21 to up to now, that is now it is September, October, October 21, that financial statement, management account statement. So all these things you will ask from the customer. First three, that is 18, 19, then 19, 20, then 20, 21 would have been audited. Would have been audited. Or maybe in some cases unaudited. Right? And there may be a draft financial account also. So the differences also you would have learned the meaning of audited uh, financial statement has been prepared by the company's accountant for the period. 
and handed over to the external auditor, chartered auditors. They have audited and signed with their opinion. And signed with the opinion, the auditors. Then it is audited financial statement. Then what is unaudited? Financial statement has been prepared by the company's accountant. Handed over the external auditors, chartered auditors. They have audited, but not yet signed. Not yet signed with their opinion. That is unaudited. So audited is more accurate. Unaudited is less accurate when compared to the audited because they have audited. External auditors have audited, but not yet signed. Maybe due to certain uh, certain questioning, certain clarification, not signed with the opinion. Draft is financial statement prepared by the company's account accountant and not yet handed over to the external auditors. So this is uh, unaudited is more liable than draft and audited is more liable than unaudited. So based on that one, so when you do your analysis, you must say whether it is audited statement or unaudited statement or draft statement or management accounts, you must say. So the people know how accurate is, which one is more accurate. And then you would have learned the ratio analysis, there will be vertical analysis and horizontal analysis. You would have learned all these things. The past financial statement, we call it operating financial statement analysis. So there you have done all those ratio analysis and everything. You, as I told you earlier, profitability, liquidity, and then gearing ratios and loan repayment ratio. Then based on that one, you project for the future years, projected financial statement, projected financial statement. Based on the past operating financial statement, you project. So there may be improvement in the business. There may be, the company may take steps to operate more efficiently, uh, effectively. So there may be improvement in the projected financial statement. So there also you will do the complete the projected financial statement, do the ratio analysis, and so it is financially viable. So that is the financial evaluation. This has been done by another lecturer. So I'm just leaving it because it is done already. Now, now the next pillar, management evaluation. This is very, very important because the management is handling all the business activity activities by the management. So management evaluation is very, very important. Basics of management assessment. Who are they? Where are they now? And where they do want to go? Do they have a good plan to get? Where they want to go? Are they capable of executing the plan? So these are the questions you must find answers. It calls for superior interpersonal skills in questioning, listening, and forming an opinion. So you are the credit officer, credit appraisal officer. So you have to discuss this matter, discuss this with the companies, company people. So you have to develop your interpersonal, interpersonal skill in questioning, not only questioning, listening. Some people only questioning. They don't listen. So you must question and listen. And based on that one, you must form an opinion about your customer. So you must find answers to these things. Who are they? Who are the management people? Relevant experience, qualification and experience of the management personnel. Breadth and depth of management. Well-balanced management team. Balanced team means there are various uh, categories of management. 
human resource management, production management, administration, marketing management, research and development, various things. So it should be a balanced management team. Qualification wise, experience wise, they must be suitable, fit those positions. So that's what we call it qualification wise, experience wise. They must suit their position, the various positions in the management team, so they must suit. So it is a balanced management team. Then, apart from that, how the company's management faces up to risk? Then there is a risky situation, risk. How they are prepared to face it? How to overcome that risk? Are they capable? The management team. Then how good the management is at planning, budgeting, and control. So by discussing with them through your interpersonal capacity, you must try to question, listen, and form an opinion about your customer's management team. Where are they now and where do they want to go? That is the company, where is the company's position now? So what they are planning to do? Where are they now? Their competitive position within the industry, where are they now? Are they in the top or in the middle or in the bottom? Where are they now? Their competitive position within the industry. Then management's own perspective of its position. What do they think about their position? What is the reason? If they are in the lower position, lowest level, so what is the reason for that one? They must have an answer. What is the reason? Then where do they want to go? Is it maximizing shareholders' wealth? More profit, maximizing the shareholders' wealth. Then management's overall vision, mission statement. What is their vision? What is their mission? and their objectives. So thereby you know where do they want to go, what do they want to do, and where do they want to go. So this is the management, the weather management is capable. Do they have a good plan to get there? Do they have a plan? So they are the company's vision, mission and objectives important thing. They must have their clear vision. How do they achieve their vision? So that means the mission and it is. So it is future plan or strategies in terms of what are their future plan and strategies? What do they want to do? What are their strategies in terms of product research and development, production, marketing, human resource development and management and finance. So they must have a clear plan, strategies, for these activities, what do they want to do in future years? So they must have a realistic plan. We call it a corporate plan. They must have a realistic corporate plan, achievable plan, realistic. Are they capable of executing the plan? So they must have, they can have a beautiful plan, but are they capable? It depends on the plan and your assessment of the people concerned. So by discussing with them, you must assess. They can have a beautiful plan and you must see whether they are capable of implementing and achieving that plan. So your ability to judge is vital. So you are the person, as an appraisal officer, you have to judge. Are they capable? whether their plan is a realistic plan and it comprises all those activities, their strategies in regard to various activities of the company. So whether it is a realistic plan and whether they are capable of achieving that plan. This is the management of the company. So this is very important, the management. Sometimes family-owned companies this there may be management. This is another important risk because India company is run by the management. 
So major risk, you must consider the management team, whether it is a very perfect team, capable of executing, whether they have a good plan and whether they are capable of executing the plan, achieving their results, objectives. And finally, loan structuring and collateral quality. So now, if everything is okay, that is environment analysis, industry outlook analysis, then uh, industry competitive position analysis, and then uh, financial analysis, and finally the management analysis, everything is okay, satisfactory. The risks you have identified and how to manage those risks if you have a plan, then you can go for uh, whether you can grant the facility or not. If you are granting the facility, how you are going to give loan structure and collateral quality they are up. So now you must decide what are the investment for this. The company would have asked you, what are the investments? What are they going to do? What are the various things they are planning to invest? Maybe the land they would have already purchased. Maybe if they are expanding the buildings. And then the machinery, plant and machinery. They may try to purchase uh, vehicles, expansion program. They may need other uh, fixed assets, maybe other fixed assets. And then they need working capital, permanent working capital. All these things, these are the investment areas. How much they want to invest? Total invest, how much they want to invest? How that will be financed? What is the customer's equity? How much they can put? Their contribution, the equity, what is the balance expected from the bank? So this is mode of financing investment and mode of financing you have to prepare. This is a base thing. So if you are agreeable to grant the facility, consider favorably with the company to grant the facility, then the investment. What are the investment? Various types of investment they want to do it if it is an expansion program under this expansion what are the various types of investment they want to go for you will list it as i told you the building uh, maybe machinery plant and machinery then the vehicle then other fixed assets required uh, maybe uh, working capital and then mode of financing how how much contributed by the how much will be contributed by the company how much the balance they expect right now you know then packaging the credit facility now you are packaging it there are various credit facilities available from you now the customer want various various purposes investment in various purposes you are listed to match that one use give suitable credit facilities Maybe you may have to give a block loan that is with a medium or long term repayment, a block loan to construct the building, maybe to purchase the machineries, plant and machineries, or even other fixed assets. You may a block loan with the repayment and everything you decide. So it is. Credit packaging, you have various types of credit facilities. You have already learned. Now, to match the customers, you have to give a suitable credit facility. This is also very important. This is also another risk element. If you give a wrong credit facility for a purpose, that may, it won't give the anticipated result. It may turn into wrong thing. So you have to give a suitable credit facility to match the purpose. 
you have various credit facilities you, if you have a uh, if you have a shopkeeper you have various various item the customer will come and ask i want this i want for this purpose this purpose this purpose or suitable item you will give similarly here you are giving a suitable credit facility to meet the customer so maybe for the building con construction of building purchasing of machineries or purchasing of uh, uh, other fixed assets you may consider one or two block loans with different repayment period to match that you had to plan it and clear and for the working capital permanent working capital expansion so that also need a incremental working capital <laughs> for the expansion if it is an already operating company they may have their working capital permanent working capital now they are expansion so need additional working capital that is incremental working capital that can be yes maybe that also you can grant either grant a pure uh, block loan or a permanent overdraft facility with a definite repayment program or without the definite repayment program based on the cash flow then for the working ca working capital if the customer is importing raw material or if the customer is importing and then process and exporting item based on that one various trade finance facilities you can give maybe hypothecation loan facility you can give if the customer is importing raw material continuously periodically periodically then you can consider a series of loan facilities or revolving credit facilities both a similar meaning series of loan or revolving credit facilities or the customer is purchasing raw material then you can consider in the case of credit milling pledge loan facility given the export also you can give a pledge loan facility or trust receipt facilities you can give then sometimes if the customer is purchasing raw materials or packing materials or any other locally and if it is acceptable you can consider bank guarantees trade guarantees you can give so depending on the import export trade finance facilities for the import and for the export so available from the available credit facilities from your bank your institution you must give a suitable credit facility to meet the customers request. that is credit packaging packaging the credit facility i will be doing uh, another one more text maybe later that is proposal preparing credit proposal preparing credit proposal there of course we will discuss this matter with suitable example uh, very clearly but this is the basic thing you should know now if you are really interested you yourself can develop this what is the meaning of credit packaging the customer won various purposes he won loan facility so to match that one you have to give the facilities available with you you must to match that one so that is package and then after packaging implementation schedule how you are going to implement how are you going to release the loans stages what are the stages for what purposes now in the building construction of the building you are going to grant they may need about uh, say 25 million rupees you won't grant the india 25 million at once you divide into two or three components maybe from the ground level up to uh, up to uh, wall and then roof second one then the balance work internal decorations and other thing electricity connection all those thing so divide into three component you can give the block loan the implementation schedule so three stages or maybe four stages depending and for what purpose those four three or four st stages so loan component how much you are granting releasing 
then what are the conditions for release of loan component after granting first component before granting second component what are the condition the customer should have fulfilled then third before granting third component or that is after second component what are the condition the customer would have fulfilled so the loan component and the condition for leasing the loan component so this is implementation schedule and then repayment this is cash flow based appropriate repayment so you must develop the cash flow construct the cash flow based on the cash flow you decide what is the repayment period whether a grace period is necessary if it is so how many month grace period so then what is the repayment period how many months or how many years how much is the installment so grace period if necessary grace period and then loan repayment suitable installment and then covenant so condition what are the condition so these conditions are based on risk analysis so you would have done overall five pillars you have analyzed various various thing you would have analyzed various risk you would have identified so what are the uh, what are the safeguards what are the safeguards against those risk risk elements or risk factors what are the safeguard you are proposing as a condition that will come maybe uh, there are various conditions that should be acceptable by the customer also some of the condition declaring dividend till the loan amount is repaid you can declare the dividends then drawing limitation on drawings by the directors then payments of directors loans and other thing no from this file from this finance they can't pay the directors loan like that various condition depending on the risk analysis which you have identified depending on the risk and the risk factors you have identified so provide safeguards so this is loan structuring and then collateral evaluation actually under the collateral you would have studied maybe under this uh, the lecturer would have discussed and uh, pisces the collateral various aspects of collateral they would have discussed so collateral is a security again the facility so if anything unexpected things comes you will realize the collateral for that purpose so it bind the customer on a uh, mentally it custom bind the customers so obtain collateral with legal certainty to realize so legal certainty is very very important so through your legal department you you must examine the title deed and everything you must get the legal certainty of the of the property the collateral then select collateral with low deterioration with time and exposure that is there are various types of collateral there are various types of collateral that also you would have done earlier they would have discussed with you uh and so you must select the collateral with the low deterioration with the time and so as the times goes on some type of uh, collateral they deteriorate especially the machineries um, plant and machineries and then vehicles they deteriorate but the land and building they appreciate so select collateral with low deterioration with time and exposure then the control the accessibility yeah you must be able to visit and see the collateral control the accessibility you must always and review and update the collateral value with market fluctuation and then here also the collateral value of the collateral i may discuss that one later also but anyway i may tell you now there are three types of value in regard to a collateral one is market value then it is uh, for sale value market value for sale value and then insurance value 
or reinstatement re reinstatement value insurance value or reinstatement value there are three values so now market value if the property is allowed to be for sale and what is the best price can be offered for that property that is the market value a professional valuer will value he based on various aspect the location of the property the type of the overall overall position of the collateral overall position of the collateral that is collateral evaluation what is the price it can fetch overall condition of the collateral so when a professional valuer he will value it and go through everything the location the type of the they call it corpus land corpus c o r p u s corpus land the type of the land uh, what type of land whether it is a uh, uh, square the type of the land whether it is a square land or the uh, rectangular shape dam or square shape dam or uh, hilly dam hilly uh, property or undulating property water lodging inundation all those things with a high tension wire is passing over it all those things and whether it is by the side of a, a public road a seed line building line all those things they will consider and give and what are the uh, structures within the within the land they will consider all those things and give the valuation that is a market value then for the bank in case if urgently if the bank want to dispose that product you dispose that land if the customer customer fail to repay and if the bank of course after certain legal procedures and everything if the bank uh, possess that land if the bank want to sell that property uh, they want to push it then sell it what is the for sale value so the for sale value is about uh, maybe certain percentage less than the market value of the property the the valuer professional valuer give give the what is the for sale value he will give based on his analysis overall condition of the collateral he will give the market value and he may give the for sale value also i have told you the location of the property is very very important accessibility accessibility to the land and the survey of plan all those things will be indicated in the values who is the surveyor what is the plan number the surveyor's name what is the extent all those things his comments and everything will be given i may discuss this one when I, we prepare the uh, we may prepare the credit proposal i may discuss with you again right so all these things uh, Ah, uh, and then insurance value or reinstatement value. That is, if the land is a bare land without any success, there is no insurance value. If there is a building within that uh, <coughs> in that land, if anything happened to that building, if it get destroyed, how much money needed to reinstate that type of building? The valuer will analyze and give the reinstatement value. So for that value, you must get the insurance cover for that value. That we call it insurance value or reinstatement value that is applicable if there is a building within the land. If anything happened to the building and if the building is damaged or collapsed, how much money you needed to conserve that type of building? That is the insurance value you have to obtain that insurance cover for that one. So there are three type of values: market value, for sale value, and insurance value. When the bank consider credit facilities, certain percentage of the for sale value, we call it rate of advance. Certain percentage of the for sale value, the bank will consider as a credit facility. We call it. Rate of advance, generally fifty percent. Generally, it is fifty percent of the for sale value bank will consider. But in the case of land and building property, 
bank may consider little more but depending on the customer if the customer is a well known customer very credit worthy customer very credit worthy customer bank may increase the rate of advance maybe 60 70 80 90 even to 100 percent bank may go depending on the bank management and the customer's credit worthiness but generally start from the 50 percent in the case of other other like other collateral like uh, machinery plant and machinery deterioration level is there because of that one the 50 generally they won't go more than 50% but maybe depending on the customer they may go little further so this is collateral evaluation so if everything is okay you must finally prepare the credit proposal for the management approval as a credit officer or appraisal officer you have to prepare that is another important everything what you have done your analysis everything will come to the this is the bottom line what is that credit proposal you have to prepare that we will be doing later now mitigating or reducing risk in credit proposals so in this credit proposal the finally there is a risk and evaluation also will be there but anyway adapting better credit appraisal techniques and identifying risk factors that is hazards in the proposal and providing safeguard is an important thing what are the various risk factors you have identified in the proposal and mention that one and provide suitable safeguard then suitable collateral to cushion the risk so when you have identified the risk so you must get a suitable collateral to cushion the risk then insurance of assets what are the assets customer giving as the security or collateral you have to you have to uh, insure that one and at the same time what are the item customer is going to purchase with the bank facility that we also will be more case to the bank uh, as a collateral that also will be insured all those assets should be insured then monitoring and follow up is very very important uh, when when the credit risk is something high so you have to strengthen the monitoring and follow up so that can be pre and post sanction supervision that is prior to the approval and after the approval the supervision check is the current account loan account i mean periodically and there may be sometimes the local gossip the local gossip may indicate certain things about the company about the company's financial position or any any misunderstanding within the company people so all those things you had to consider so mitigating and reducing the risk in credit proposal right in regard to this credit risk there is another item credit rating credit rating so we must know about credit rating also what is credit rating the process of assessing the credit worthiness of a customer as well as his or her financial debt or obligation this is assessing the credit worthiness of a customer as well as his financial debt or obligation assess it will indicate risk status of the entity or the debt instrument if they are uh, if they are passing any debt instrument yeah that will indicate the risk state of the customer or his debt instrument credit rating can be assigned to any entity that seeks to borrow money if anybody want to borrow money so you can do a credit rating so that can be individual credit rating companies credit rating corporations yes credit rating provincial authorities yes credit rating even government credit rating i can remember about few years back standard and poor did the credit rating for sri lanka 
and uh, recently they have degraded the credit rating also recently if you have read papers you would have seen sri lankan the credit rating has come down anyway it is done by the credit rating is done by credit rating agencies there are various credit rating agencies they do so after doing the credit rating they analyze all those things financial management and everything all the analysis they have done and they indicate the risk by giving the credit rating so credit rating is alphabetic or alpha numeric notation alphabetic or alpha numeric so alphabetic letters or similar numeric also can be included notations are used to denote the credit rating of entities so that can be capital a a a capital a small a a a capital a a plus capital a small a one a capital a a capital a two like that yeah, these are the notation there so this notation will indicate certain things this notation will indicate certain things credit rating agencies so there are credit rating agencies do they carry out the credit rating of the customers so external agencies global agency there are three big three there is a they call it big three one is standard and poor other one is fitch then modi's investor service limited these three three people these three companies the globally they do about more than 90% of the rating done by these three people standard and poor fitch and then modi's investor service limited then the national agency is sri lanka fitch rating lanka limited there is one agency they are doing lanka rating agency limited formerly that was called a ram rating and then there is another one icra lanka limited this is a subsidiary of indian icra limited subsidy that is sri lankan icra lanka limited they also doing this rating and giving their notations types of credit rating so there are different types of credit rating one is sovereign credit rating for the country as i told you for sri lanka the recently even american rating america also they have rated and they de degraded america so that they have big chaos american credit rating went down yes and sri lanka also they have done about few years back recently they have downgraded it. then corporate credit rating for corporate company conglomerate transnational yes corporate credit rating sme credit rating for sme credit customers also yeah credit rating can be done retail customer credit rating retail customer then this credit scoring it is mainly for consumer credit mainly for consumer credit now our crip also doing the credit scoring our crip also do in the credit scoring so they maintain the credit reports of the customer of the sri lankan customers our crip and then if the customer want he can get his credit scoring by making a payment from the crip and the banks also for the customers they are doing this credit scoring and apart from that the credit rating can be long term credit rating period wise medium term credit rating short term credit rating this also available so these are the different types of credit rating now now right now before that one the i told you the credit rating uh, they give the rate various rating a a a plus that mean standard and poor they give this a a a plus a a a that is well established in a financially very sound position this rating indicates certain thing a a plus if the capital a capital a plus if they give standard and poor give the notation that indicates their their repayment capacity is good they can repay their liabilities 
So that indicates, so one piece of advice, if you want to know better to have some idea, go to internet, uh, even you can go to credit ratings of Standard and Poor uh, and uh, Fitch. I mentioned those uh, international rating agencies and the interpretation. If you put, so all these things on Moody's one will come, international uh, Standard and Poor will come, and Moody's will come, and Fitch will come. All those will think come with the, what are their rating, various, various rating plus the interpretation. So better have an idea that will give you more. I can't explain you everything with the time limitation. Okay, so you can, it is your responsibility, go through the internet and get it. Right, now, in general credit rating by of customers by financial institution. Finally, there is an internal credit rating of customers by financial institution. Now, in Sri Lanka, all banks and finance companies, they have to carry out the internal credit rating of their customers. Under Basel 2, now the, actually in the Basel 3 has already there. So under Basel 2 it came, the central bank has directed the financial institution to develop efficient mechanism for internal credit rating of their customers. So it's a must. All banks and finance companies have to rate their customers internally, credit rating. So financial institutions now carry out internal credit rating by manual or computer-based. Some banks are using manually, some bank computer-based operation. And assign alphabetic, alphanumeric notation to indicate the risk status of the customer. Prior to granting any facility, Prior to granting any facility, they have to internally credit rate their customers and assign their notation. And also during the period of review and repayment. So prior to granting the facility also, they have to rate their customers. And during the period review and the repayment period also, they have to carry out the internal credit rating, the financial institution. Now, it is also types of internal credit rating. Customer rating is there. Consumer credit customers rating, personal customers also rating, SME customers also, retail customers also, corporate customers also, the credit rating is there. Facility rating also. For different types of facilities also, credit rating is there. Banks are doing. Then collateral rating also there. For various types of collateral, different type of collateral, the banks have to do the credit rating. So the customer rating is there, facility rating is there, collateral rating also there. Fine. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, explained uh, this corporate credit, uh, co corporate credit evaluation. Generally, you get one question from this also for your papers. So better uh, this time, of course, something different question may come from the corporate. From the corporate, some different uh, question I am thinking to put. So anyway, uh, prepare for that. If you have any doubts or anything, you can uh, give me a call. Apart from that, uh, uh, apart from that. Uh, I may take one more lecture that is uh, maybe at the final stage. Right. Uh, I may take, uh, and there is an, uh, that is uh, preparation of credit proposal. There, of course, I will be discussing various things, even this valuation of properties. Also, I will, I will, today I have explained you certain things. I will, more and more things I will explain you later. Right. There is another important thing, assignment. There is an assignment uh, that will be, yeah, 10 pages. Anyway, uh, uh, there will be an assignment, uh, maybe in your next class it will be given, uh, 
uh, oh, before the next class, it will be now online, know everything. Before the next class, uh, the assignment will be given. Uh, what is it? A final date for the submission? So one month time, anyway, one month time we will give you for the submission. Uh, that is, of course, on your own, you do the, uh, uh, you uh, what is it, uh, uh, disk um, uh, analysis and everything, you must prepare. It will be around 10 pages document. You have to prepare and give. It is an assignment. Uh, next week, or you, you will be notified what is the assignment. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, of course, uh, even now, if you want to ask any, you can ask or you can telephone me and you can ask.